Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a breakfast sausage. What we're going to need is a broth of some kind. So, because we're vegan, we don't use any beef or chicken, we're going to make a mushroom broth. Okay, I have some mushroom powder left. I have about maybe, I should actually maybe blend some more up, right? But I am going to put, okay, so because we're making, um, because we're making a, a, a veggie or a vegan, uh, a vegan dish, we're going to need, instead of uh, putting a beef stock or a chicken stock, because you want your, your patties to have some kind of a, um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put, here we go, I have three cups of water and I'm going to put one, two, I'm going to put two tablespoons of, of mushroom powder and that's very easy to make by the way. If you notice, I just made a fast batch because I was running out and then I'm just going to store it in a jar. Um, what I do, I think I showed you in another video, what I do is I buy these dry Asian mushrooms and uh, I just keep them in my pantry and then when I need it I just take these mushrooms and I put them in my bullet and I get um, mushroom powder. Now what I like about mushroom powder is that it actually has a lot of minerals in it. Uh, the mushroom gives it a nice earthy taste. I'm going to add a little bit of soy and that's going to make it nice, um, nice and dark. And I'm going to put a little drop of molasses. There we go. We're just going to put a little bit of molasses. About a, maybe a teaspoon. There we go. Now, this is going to go onto my burner. And I'm just going to put this to boil. And once it boils, I'm just going to put it to simmer until I'm ready to use this. So there you go, you've got your molasses, you've got a little bit of soy sauce in there, and basically water and two table, uh, tablespoons of mushroom. We do want to add some salt to it. So I'm going to put about maybe a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt, and just taste it. And that's fine. Now, you can also put, if you're making it as a broth, I mean, I'm not going to go to that extreme, but you could put a carrot, uh, you could put some celery, uh, a celery stick in there, and just put this to cook ahead of time. And you just want it to simmer. You're going to need three cups of this for what we're going to be doing. So I'm just going to put this on the burner. So now, we're going to start, I'm going to take my food processor, and we're going to start adding some ingredients to it. We're going to take, now this is all gluten free, so this is really a nice, uh, but you got to check. When you get your rolled oats, they're supposed to be gluten free. But because they're, if they've been stored where other, uh, other grains are, it could be contaminated. So if it doesn't say gluten free, you might have some gluten in your, uh, in your oats. But uh, for this batch, I know some people want to try something that doesn't have uh, wheat gluten in it. And this is the recipe we're going to be making today. So make sure it says gluten-free on your rolled oats. So we're going to use one cup of rolled oats. Jeez, here we go. Almost a cup. I've got most of it on my counter. I'm not on the ball today. Okay, let's just clean this up. Here we go. We have one cup of rolled oats. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get... Okay, so I'm going to put that on low. Okay. Now, if you don't have a mortar, I guess you could use a cup. Um, you could find something. Maybe you could put some of these uh, see, uh, some of these spices in a plastic bag and just with a cup you can maybe pound them in. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some fennel seeds and we need, okay, we need one teaspoon of uh, fennel seeds. And if you notice, my teaspoons are never, never really level. So it's just a teaspoon and a little bit. We're going to put that in. We're going to take 
some black pepper, uh, not black pepper, some red pepper. And you really don't need this that much of this. There we go. We're going to take maybe a half a teaspoon of this. Here's my half a teaspoon. Here we go. So we've got half a teaspoon of red, uh, red peppercorns. We're going to add to this my chili flakes, if I could find where I put it. Oh, here it is. And we like it spicy, but you could put as much as you want. I'm going to put one teaspoon for now. That's so good. Mm -mm. That's really good. Okay. And we're just going to pound this up a little bit. Just crush it. You don't want to turn it into a powder because you do want to keep some pieces in there. There we go. And just give them a good crush. And really, I mean, you know, if you don't want pieces, keep crushing it until you get the texture that you want. Okay, and there's mine. And that's just going to go right into my food processor. There we go. Now, we're going to need some onion. Now, you can use fresh onion or you can use dried onion. I'm going to take my dried onions because I really like the smell of these onion flakes. So I'm going to take, I'd say about one tablespoon there we go. One tablespoon of fresh onion flakes. We're going to put that in. You know what? Maybe I'm going to put a tablespoon and a half. There we go. One and a half onion flakes. And these are going to be great in the morning. Especially if you make a nice little um, uh, tofu scramble. You can make a nice little sausage patty or sausage... Uh, like you could either make them into small little sausages or you can make them into little patties. It depends how you like it. Now we're going to need some garlic. You could use garlic, um, you could actually use the garlic powder, but I'm not a big fan of garlic powder. I rather have fresh garlic that I crush myself because I like to feel the little bits in my food. And the same thing with the onion, but this time I'm just going to do the dry onion but if you don't have dry onion you can just chop up uh, just chop up a medium to small onion chop it up really fine and just throw it in if you don't have the uh, the flakes I'm trying to clean this garlic I should have cleaned it earlier eh? okay so here's my garlic press and I'm just gonna crush the garlic right into my food processor. I pay so much money for this press and it always comes off on the side. Drives me nuts. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to take whatever's inside and just throw it in. I'm sure when I give it a good pulse, it's going to uh, it's gonna break up. Okay, so there we go. We got the garlic, we got the onion. Okay, we're gonna need some salt for some flavor. Let's just put, I'd say about a half a teaspoon of salt. We don't want it too salty, so there you go, about half a teaspoon of salt. You can use either gray salt, you can use uh, Himalayan salt. There you go. This is the, I just made a, a recipe for this. I'm going to put my Caribbean spice. I am going to put one tablespoon. And that's going to go straight into my mixture. And it gives me a chance to give it a good shake and loosen it up inside my jar. Okay, so we got the Caribbean spice in there. We need some sage. I forgot to pull up my sage, if you give me a second. Here we go. We're going to put one teaspoon of powdered or ground sage. 
we're gonna need some coriander and this is also ground coriander and we're gonna put another teaspoon of that okay I forgot to take my rosemary. Now you can either put fresh rosemary or you can take, uh, there we go. I've got about a tablespoon of rosemary, but I'm gonna crush that up in my mortar. So it gets into smaller pieces. So I have smaller pieces going in. Now this is more like a, a nice country sausage. So we're going to put, let's see, is it about one? No. One and a half of that. There you go. You see that? And I'm just going to put the rest back into my jar. So you do need one and a half rosemary. And it just gives it that nice country flavor. So we need black pepper. We're going to put about, let's say, this is ground black pepper. We're going to put about a half a teaspoon. Okay, now you're going to need some kind of a binder. So because we don't use eggs, we're going to use milled flax seeds. But we have to add, now you either can make your egg, uh, okay, here we go. You can either make your egg ahead of time or you can just put it in. Add the water that you need to um, uh, need to turn your flax into an egg and just let it sit a bit. Or like I said, you can mix this ahead of time where it's one tablespoon of um, uh, ground flax to three tablespoons of water. So I'm going to put one, two, three. So I'm going to need three times three, that's how much water I'm going to need. I'm going to need nine tablespoons of water, but I will do that later. I'm just going to put this aside. Okay, so we're just going to quickly give this a pulse because the uh, the oats are a little big. We just want, you don't want to break it down completely, but you want to be able just to give it a little break into the oats. We're just going to gently pulse this. And I'm just going to show you. There you go. And not only did we break down the oats a bit, but we also mixed it well. So I'm just going to put this in a bowl. Okay, so now to this, we're going to add uh, some olive oil, or you could use coconut oil if you don't want olive oil, and we're going to add our water. just want to get it all in there. Here we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this looks like a lot of water, but it really isn't because the uh, the oats and the flax seeds, the ground flax seeds, will pick that up. And we're just going to put a little drizzle of oil. We're just going to gently mix this. And turn it into a paste but we will let this sit because we want this to really absorb the water and then we're going to either shape them into little sausages or we can shape them into little patties that really depends on how you want to uh, how you want to uh, make them so we're just going to let this sit and I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. All those spices and herbs. And really, if you think about it, you know, when people say, oh, I like my meat, they really don't like their meat. What they do like is how you cook the meat. 
and this goes with anything else that you make yourself. So if you're going to, um, if you're going to make whatever, let it be oats or whatever you're going to cook, it's what you do to it. Also, I have, uh, I put up a beautiful recipe on my cilantro sauce, and I'm going to be making, hopefully this week, if not this week, it'll be next, I'm going to be making some delicious veggie balls that you can actually uh, serve as a, a little hors d'oeuvre if you have guests over, especially with the holidays coming up. Here we go. So we're just going to let this soak it up, and if you find the mixture is too wet, what you can do is put a little bit of chickpea flour. So we're going to let it sit and we're going to see if it's absorbed most of the liquid or if we have to uh, do something else to it. They taste amazing. My God, this is so good. So flavorful too. So we're just going to let it do its thing and we're going to be back in about five minutes. I almost forgot. Silly, silly me. A little bit of smoke. Now, if you don't have smoke, uh, maybe you can use a little bit of, um, uh, you can use maybe if you have smoked paprika, uh, but I find it's, it, um, it tastes too much like hot dogs if you use that. But I use just a mesquite liquid smoke. You're gonna put a little bit of that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of maple. I can't believe I actually forgot that. There we go. Just a little bit of maple. And we're gonna mix it up. I am gonna put a mixture of some parsley and basil. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of this. Sorry, a tablespoon. And I'm gonna just mix it in. And you can see that it's firming up really, really nice. It almost feels like when, you've, when you're trying to mix in some ingredients into minced meat, believe it or not. It has a very odd texture going on. Now this, believe, this recipe is, uh, I mean, I've changed it up a bit, but this recipe uh, stems from an old World War II recipe where they used to make uh, meat out of oats, believe it or not. When there was famine, people didn't have the luxury of, not that I call it a luxury, I really don't call that a luxury, but they didn't have, the, uh, they didn't have any meat, so they had to make do with what they had. And uh, so this is an old, old recipe. And I just kind of jazzed it up a little. Uh, instead of using uh, like beef broth, I'm using the, uh, the mushroom broth that I'm making. And I make that so easy, so easy to make. I also make a gravy with the uh, mushroom powder. So as you could tell, it's firming up really nice. Now, you have a choice. First of all, you have to grease your hands. Otherwise, you're going to make a mess of your hands. So my hands are washed, by the way. Um, just kind of coat them. Now you have a choice. You could either turn these into flat patties, like this, or you could try and give it the, the sausage look. And you can make like a breakfast sausage. So that really is up to you how you want to make it. So we're going to do some as a sausage. I just need a plate. Be back. Here we go. And look how much you actually get. Uh, you get quite a bit from just one cup of oats. So now you could either make them into like sausages like this, or you can take it and turn them into a flat patty where you just mold it. Remember, you need to get those hands nice and nice and wet with oil. Otherwise, you'll have a mess. Here we go. So sausage or patty. So that really is up to you. But I'm going to try and make little sausages. Here we go.
we're gonna put them onto a pan. I'm gonna try and do this without breaking them. Maybe I should just wipe my hands with some water. So we have a couple of little sausages. Maybe I should put the sausages all on one side. And the patties on the other. So the patties really it depends on how big you want them. If you want large patties or if you want smaller patties, but that's really up to you. And we're just going to put this on a medium heat and we're going to get them nice and like a nice light golden. There we go. So that would be a medium high. You just want to get them a little golden because then we're going to pour the broth over them where we're going to cook the oats because these oats are not cooked. Now I'm going to have to try making these wrapped and then steamed and see how they come out. It's just fun trying different things, right? Maybe I could jack it up just a little higher. I mean, you know, play by ear. You don't want to overburn them. You want them a little golden because these are going to get refried again one more time. And if you want them smokier, after they've been cooked, you could always, when you're doing the last fry, you could also uh, maybe add a little extra smoke if that's what you want. I'm going to put them on a the high, make sure that they get uh, nice and golden. You don't want them too brown. And they hold their own. Isn't that crazy? How you could just take a little bit of oats and make something out of it. I guess we could have used more oil, but I'm always trying to not use as much oil as... I would like to use, I guess. Always looking to be a little healthier. And these have very little fat. So if you put a little bit of oil, and if you think about the oil that you put, I put about maybe two tablespoons of oil in my sausage when I was mixing it. And a drizzle of oil, so say three tablespoons of oil. Even if you put four and you divide that per sausage, you really don't have that much fat in your in your food. So. It's not as bad as if you would be eating animal products where it's just loaded with fats and cholesterol. So these are a healthier way to go. Like I said, this is an old, old World War II recipe, believe it or not. And a lot of people, you know what, I was reading up on, um, on, um, People that are uh, worried about the end of the world coming and how they uh, put certain foods into storage because they want to make sure that uh, they do have food for whatever time they need or, you know, if they're in a bunker. And uh, this is a great way to have like a meat type uh, dish without having any animal products that would spoil on you, right? So... Uh, being vegan, we have a lot of that option where we can actually uh, have a lot of food that is stored, either the grains. So, you know, we're like one step ahead of them, believe it or not. I feel sorry for the people who need to eat animals. What are they going to do? They're going to start eating each other. I'm just going to put a little extra fat. And this is really up to you. If you're not worried about the fat intake... Especially if it's a good fat like coconut oil uh, or avocado oil, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're looking into not using that much fat, well then just be careful and don't use as much. Make sure you have a good uh, uh, pan where it doesn't stick on you. They smell fantastic by the way. These look good now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now 
I don't want to over brown them either. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my broth and just bring this to a boil and then I'm going to simmer it for about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to take some broth. Here we go. That didn't take long. Here we go. And we're just going to bring this to a very low simmer and let this cook. Don't cover it completely, just, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so here's what it looks like. And this came out of the broth. They kind of broke down a little because I was busy doing other things and I forgot this was going on on the stove. But they still hold their own. And I'm just going to put some of these because I made my daughter a beautiful breakfast. So I'm going to put these to fry up. And now what you could do is you could actually make them. When it gets to this point, after you uh, boil them in the broth, uh, you could actually freeze these so when you need them for breakfast, you just pull them out and just throw them in the pan. But I'm going to cook all of these because someone's going to be eating them for sure. And here's a little sausages. They really do hold up nicely. I just got a little carried away working on the computer and I didn't realize that these sausages needed to be checked on. But if I tell you you would never know. I mean, if you like the taste of sausages, you will freak out how good these are. So I'm just going to cook these up. Another bonus. Here's what's left of the mushroom. Look at that. The mushroom uh, broth that I made when we cooked the sausages in there. This is better than gravy. You do not throw this away. You're going to keep this and you could add a little bit of flour. Or start, and you can make a nice gravy for whatever you're using. It you can make puts in. You could. Uh, I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Do not throw that away, especially if you're using a mushroom broth. Now my spatula looks dirty because I just did some fried uh, scrambled for my daughter. But look at these. They are just fantastic, and I bet these would make wonderful little sliders too. Just cook them till they're nice and brown, and then you're off and serve them on whatever you serve them on. And they really do hold their own. Look at that. Delicious, delicious. So here you go, guys. Very easy, very simple. It is one of the easiest recipes you'll ever make. And all you need is some oats and some spices and um, you've got yourself some breakfast sausages. So guys, if you like to see more recipes like this, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.